Hey gang, we are at the St. Francis Catholic Cemetery in Phoenix, Arizona today. And we're going to talk a little about a very famous jewelry heist from World War II. It's like the movie Kelly's Heroes, you know, they're searching for the gold, they found the gold. How do you get it? Well, in this case it was the crown jewels of the Hesse family, north of Frankfurt. There was a castle. Now. It was 1945, it was March, and General Patton had just rolled into Frankfurt. You know, this was nearing the end of the war. So Frankfurt was a, a really good strategic position for the Allies, and they decided to make it headquarters. Eisenhower, the city and the infrastructure all over was completely destroyed. So, you know, basically everyone, all the army, from privates up to officers, they were all living in tents. Well, they discovered this castle north of the city a few miles that was not bombed by the Allies. It's called Kronberg Castle. And they said, we're going to make this the officers club. And they called it the Kronberg Country Club. Now, there was a woman who was from Phoenix here who was actually the manager or assistant manager actually of the country club of Phoenix. They ended up recruiting her to manage the new country club. How did they do that? Well, she was a divorcee here. She was 42 years old, Kathleen Nash. She lied, she took 10 years off her life to make herself 32 and she applied and was chosen and with her expertise, that's where they sent her. and she would manage it very well. In fact, with all of her great experience, she could throw these lavish parties and they really loved her, especially the officers. Now there were two officers, one by the name of Jack Durant and the other was named Watson and they became good friends. Now she was looking for ways to entertain and they found this wine cellar. They found 1,600 bottles of really nice wine. And they're like, well, you know, war prize, right? And now especially, you know, during the war, if you were you know, you still take flags, you take daggers, pistols, Lugers, right? I mean, it was, it was prizes of war. It would keep the morale up. But when General Eisenhower got there, he said, you know, we're going to lead by example. We got to rebuild this country. And we're not going to have this. And they consider jewelry like artwork. So they really clamped down after that. Eisenhower was a real stand up general. and. He said, we're not going to be doing this. Well, they, they debated about the wine. They said, well, you know, we can't really take it, but hey, we can drink it. So they drank all the wine. And it, after a few months, they ran out of wine. So what did they do? They went, she went back down into the the basement and then she went to the sub-basement to try to find some more. And she with a, I think as one of the privates, one of the helpers, they were down there and this guy saw these two wires sticking out of the wall, a brick wall. Now, you know, when the Germans were evacuating towards the end of the war, they would many times hide their valuables behind false walls. So they all knew what to look for. And these two wires, there were no outlets, there was nothing. So pulled on that, it's like, hey, there's a false wall, let's break it down. What do they find behind the wall? They find 1,600 more bottles of priceless wine. Let's drink that. But they found something else really interesting. They found on the floor, 
on the, on the concrete, like a square. It looked like somebody had buried something and covered it in concrete. Hmm. You know, you look at that and you're like, ooh, treasure. They got the pickaxe, they broke it open. What did they find? Well, they found a, a wood box that was lined with zinc and they opened it, she opened it. And it's like Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's like the treasure beyond belief. There are jewels, unspeakable jewels, bracelets, tiaras. There were emeralds, rubies, sapphires, watches, uh, everything you can imagine in a pile. One bracelet had 400 diamonds in it. They're like, wow. So she took it upstairs to her room. She was actually getting very close to Durant and they were having an affair. He was married, he had an unhappy marriage. She's a divorcee, so they had an affair. So she brought him right into it. Now he was a lawyer. He was a scheming lawyer. She's like, what should we do? Now the other friend, Watson, heard about it. So they're like, well, we gotta keep him in a, we gotta include him on the take. Durant called his compatriots, you know, in the law offices, and he's like, you know, what's the actual definition of, you know, looted, stolen property? You know, it was a loose definition. And generally, if it was Nazi, it was kind of, you were able to keep it. But it was still, you know, under Eisenhower's directive, they really weren't supposed to. All right, now we are in the face of a gauntlet of sprinklers. Whoa, I'm gonna turn the camera. Cause we just got, ooh, we just got hit. All right, we gotta dodge the gauntlet of sprinklers. I'm gonna wait for this one to go. Cause there's a couple of cool stones here to see. So they decided that they're going to, they're going to keep the jewels. All right, we're, we're gonna keep it, and our only challenge is how do we get it out? Now, customs coming out of there, they were looking for this kind of stuff. War prizes. In fact, the officers were already pilfering the whole mansion. They were taking all kinds of stuff, and Kathleen was in charge of stopping it, and she was doing a pretty good job, but this was different. So what they decided to do is they decided to they tried to fence some of it in Switzerland. That wasn't working so good. Same in Belgium. Comes another sprinkler. What they decided to is really sad is they decided to demantle, basically take all the diamonds and jewels out of the, the settings and just basically destroy them. It was worth about, I don't know, $2 million. Today's dollars, $50 million in jewels. They just broke them apart and destroyed most of them. And what Kathleen did is she took hers a bunch and she sent it to her sister who lived in Wisconsin. Now her sister in Wisconsin, she's like, hey, this is great. I mean, there was silverware too. They say they were they were eating dinner with the crown jewels. Here comes the water. Woo. They were eating dinner with the crown jewels and they hit most of it in the attic. And Durant sent it to his brother in Virginia a bunch and they were just mailing it like the mail. Didn't get caught. And he was hiding it. So they had all these people hiding the jewels, sending direct mail, but they, oh, here comes another sprinkler. We'll get it on the legs. How's that? Hey, this is fun. Oh, it's coming back, guys. And I'm getting hit from behind. We're getting hit from all angles. All right, what do we do? I think we go between them. Yeah, okay. We dodged it. 
So yeah, they're <laughs> they are they're sending them back and they're not getting caught, but they still have a lot left. So they're like, what do we do? How are we how are we gonna get rid of the rest of these? How are we gonna get them back to the States? So Durant gets diplomatic immunity because he's like classifies himself as a courier. He brings a bunch back. And they're like, listen, we got to get discharged because if we get caught, we don't have to get court-martialed. They can't touch us. So he forges a document, gets discharged. Nash files. She's like days away from getting discharged. But she's still there. She's not in the States. She needs to rendezvous with Jack Durant. Uh oh, look out. We got a, where's it coming? Oh, we're gonna go like under. No, we can't. All right, bear with me here. We we're about to get hit by this, this one. All right. We are dodging the sprinklers, folks. So far successfully, but I think we might get nabbed here pretty soon. So what do they do? She had sent the stuff to her sister. He had sent the stuff to the brother. He got a bunch of his out. And she's getting ready with her plan. And she's at the mansion. She's literally the day she's gonna leave or the week. And the one of the relatives who's getting married, I think it was Sophia was her name. She comes to the mansion, the war's over, and she's like, I'm gonna go right over the sprinkler. I'm gonna have to, we're getting pinned here. And how about this? Trying to tell a story while dodging sprinklers. This is crazy. Okay. And Sophia comes. She's like, I'm getting married. I need my jewels. And Kathleen's like, oh, your jewels are safe. I've got them safe, but I can't give them to you right now. All right, we're almost out of the sprinklers, guys. Got another one over here coming. So she turns her away and she goes back and she's like, I need the jewels. So the long, the short of it is they're not getting the jewels. So they're like, they report it to Frankfurt authorities and the US Army. And now there's an investigation. So she gets out of there. Kathleen is out of there. She gets back to the States. She's like days away from discharge. And it's looking good. The investigation commences and they discover what happened. And now the manhunt is on. I mean, they know who to look for. Look at this. First Lieutenant Peter C. Corey, 1914. He died in the war, obviously, in Japan. And that is not a B-17. That's like the Enola Gay, guys. Yeah, 1945, Super Fortress was coming out. Thank you for your service, sir. So they're kind of looking good, right? Well, not because the Army has this thing called a pocket. I think I, I know the exact term. It's like pocket orders where they could extend your service like that temporarily for seven months. So the first thing they did is they initiated that. And those three were on the run. Now Watson got caught right away and he, they said, we'll give you immunity if you confess and tell us all, which he did. So the two are on the run and the manhunt begins. Now, you know, they were very smart. They said, hey, we should take a plane, right? We'll get plane tickets, but then not take the plane, we'll take the train. They're doing all, it was like, it was like cops and robbers, you know, they were trying to catch up, catch up to these guys, and they couldn't. Jack Durant, when he got back, he bought an expensive car with diamonds. Actually, he used cash, he had fenced from the diamonds, and I think he tried to buy his brother a car with diamonds. You know, some stupid moves. 
but they were on the run in the United States and they were being hunted. And they were, they were evading. It was working, guys. And they were literally on the last day before the pocket, the, the pocket discharge, or I shouldn't say, they were, de they were on the, literally the last day when, of course, illegally Durant's discharged with the forged papers, but Kathleen, I don't know if they were able to extend him, but they did extend Kathleen, so we had to get her out of the woods. And on, they were in Chicago. They got married. It's like, well, let's get married so that if we get caught, we don't have to testify against each other. And while we're at it, let's have a great honeymoon. And let's go to Chicago. And they went to the hotel in downtown Chicago and just had a lavish time. She was even, Kathleen was even wearing the jewelry from the Hessa family. Well, their luck ran out literally hours before she would become a civilian. Not that that would have really mattered. I mean, come on. They would have toasted them anyway. But the MPs found them at the hotel and arrested them. They got them. And they quickly, you know, with the testimony from Watson, you know, the jig was up, so they, in no time at all, broke down and confessed. Now, while all this was going on, there was a covert operation going on back at the castle, espionage. Now, Edward, I don't know if you guys know Edward, who was the King of Britain, he abdicated. Edward, Duke of Windsor. There was no direct evidence, but he was pretty much a Nazi collaborator. He married an American and he, he was like, I'm out, I want you to be on my own, no more royalty. And he was a Hitler supporter. Now apparently in the castle, because he was a cousin of the Hesse family, it was you know, a very rich family who owned this castle. And he said, I guess there were papers and letters and all kinds of stuff that the Hesse family had in the files about his collaborations. So they sent in a very notorious spy, Anthony Blunt, and he tried to get in and Nash said no. She suspected something. This is before, this is, you know, the days before she was leaving. And so he broke in at night. He broke in at night and he got the papers, two boxes of papers out. Papers have never been found. So that's a whole espionage thing going on with the story. But back to the trial, they were, of course, I think it was a year or two, I think it was 1946, they went to trial, flew them back to Germany. They had three separate trials. Kathleen was tried first individually. And the defense they all tried to use was, you know, the spoils of war. In other words, if we're guilty, then so are a million other soldiers and officers with the U.S. Army. We've all got dirt on our hands. Well, that didn't work. That didn't work, and Captain Nash, Kathleen Nash, was sentenced to five years. Turned out she was a very difficult prisoner, so she had to serve the entire term. Colonel Durant was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor, and he got out in six years. And Watson basically served four months of a three-year sentence. Why? Because, you know, he got that immunity, but he didn't get immunity in the end. But you can count it as such. And sadly, they never found the jewels. The jewels are still missing. They found, they got about half the jewels back, which are only worth about 10% of their value because the settings, you know, they destroyed them. But to this day, I mean, Jack Durant was cooperating. He got some of the jewels back. He sold to like a gangster. And that was a whole, whole story in itself, by the way. I'm only touching on a lot of this stuff 
In the end, sadly, like a lot of the treasures of that the Jews had and others are still missing to this day. Spoils, spoils of thievery. And I guess that's the question you got to ask. I'm kind of in the middle on it on this one. I, I do lean to this, this was stolen loot. But, you know, the definitions were kind of loose. But, you know, this made headlines at the time, so. So, anyway, guys, we're here at the cemetery looking for Kathleen's grave. And I have to tell you, she's supposedly right here. This is SFS number four. And I've spent an hour looking for her. We have a picture of her stone on find a grave. We have a location, but that's not always right. And I don't know if it's right here. Now what's interesting is, well, let me show you first where she's supposed to be. I'm facing north right now. This is, if you come here, and I could use anybody's help. If we want to be a sleuth, let's try and find her because she's, according to the cemetery, from my coordinates, she's here on this outer wall, or she is supposed to be right in that corner over there. And if you look at Find a Grave, whoever did that entry did a has a picture of her stone. Very simple stone with a cross on the left side. Kathleen V. Durant. But I've checked every stone in this whole section. Like I said, over an hour, I went to the, the office, and if you look just beyond that gentleman over there, like if any of you come here, see that building there? That is the St. Francis Catholic Cemetery office. And I work with them. They did not have her, they did not have her even in the records, which tells me, you know, from my experience, like back at Mount Carmel with certain graves, that they don't, sorry, it's really hot out here. They don't even want her to be maybe found. And I don't know. I don't know why she's not in the records. It's really, really strange. So they used the coordinates off Find a Grave, which I showed them. They said, this is right here. I followed the GPS. Whoever put that in, put it right in the middle of the statue right here. So as I always say, you know, come on guys, put the GPS position on the grave. You know, I'm just trying to educate. I'm always trying to educate on this channel. So, I don't know, guys. You know, the, as best as I could tell from the map, and then I'll show you here. This is what they gave me. She's in this grave three, right? So let me put the camera down right here. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I did get the map print out from the cemetery. Yeah, so if you orient this, see the star, that's that corner. So if you look at that star, that is her in the corner. But number three is like right here, right here outside the wall. So I don't know. I think uh, it'd be great to get some help from you guys. I've done everything I think I can do to try to find her grave, which I'm gonna say is like right, well, grave three is right where that stone is, right here. So that's the best we can do on locating her. So I'm gonna just put a flower here for her. And there it is, folks. Kathleen Nash, she's here somewhere close. And I ask you, I mean, what, what do you guys think? What do you think about this, this whole treasure and all this business? Do you think it was illegal? Do you think they were improperly prosecuted? Everybody was stealing stuff and they were connected to the Nazis. Well, at the beginning, they separated themselves halfway through the war, the Hesse family. The House of Hesse. But where is the rest of the treasure now? And I wonder, you know, you have to wonder, is it still hidden? 
is it's still hidden in the descendants of the Durants and, and Kathleen. <laughs> you gotta ask. You gotta believe. That's where I think it is spread out through the families. Never get it back. All right, well, Kathleen Durant, Kathleen V. Durant, Kathleen Nash, AKA, it's another maiden name. Well, wherever you are, rest in peace.